So those are commercial factors, but for temperature, we don't have commercial factors. But we have uh, uh, our conversion formulas instead. So we're going to be using three main scales of temperature. One is Fahrenheit, the other is Celsius, and the absolute the absolute temperature scale, which is Kelvin. We're going to be using Kelvin a lot, but not this partial, but still. If it's given in, te uh, in a temperature in Kelvin, you know that you have to uh, to be doing uh, some conversions. Now, take a look. Take a look here. Okay, so take a look right here. In the first one, what we have is a conversion from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Usually the conversion, I mean, the formula is like this without the parentheses. Now, I put the parentheses because this allows you to see the parentheses and put them in the calculator. Okay, so why is that? Are those parentheses so important? Imagine that I say, guys, I need you to do a conversion. Okay, I need you to convert from this uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. So you see the formula and you say, okay, easy peasy. So this is equal to 100 minus 32 divided by 1.8. And you put it in the calculator and you get 82.22 degrees. Celsius, okay? Question, did I do something incorrect? When you put it in the calculator without the parentheses, it's going to give you a different answer. Exactly, it's going to give you a different answer. That's why I told you, put them in separate. Why? Because if you put it like this, I mean, the formula is correct. If you put the formula like that, the formula is correct. I mean, Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1.8. The formula is good. But the calculator understands, with this, the calculator understands the following. 100 minus 32 divided by 1.8. Now, if you see, the formula changes, right? It's not the same. It is not the same. So what I'm trying to say is that even though the formula doesn't have a parenthesis, I put it on because in that way you will put it in the calculator. You're learning, you need to see your camera. When you put it in the calculator with a parenthesis, there's no way you can you can have a mistake. Now let's use the parentheses and, and see how much we get. If I use the parentheses, if I use the parentheses, it's going to be parentheses 100 minus 32 plus parentheses divided by 1.8. So with the parentheses, this is the process that you have to do. Okay. The calculator now understands that according to the order of operations, parentheses go first. So it's going to do the subtraction first and later it's going to do the division. And this is the right process for this. So I highly recommend you to use parentheses instead. Now let's take a look at the other equation. But, but first, but first, sorry. I want you to tell me the answer that you get by using the parentheses. What is the answer that you get here? Uh -huh. 27.78. Okay. Now, as you can see, the two answers are both different. Okay. But which one is the good one? The good one is the one that has parentheses because the calculator is a logical process. Okay, the logical process is 
first the subtraction and then the division. That's the logical process according to the process of order of operations. So, yes, is math. Math is a little bit related with physics, but in this formula, please use the parentheses. That's all I ask. If you use parentheses, it's going to be okay. If you miss the parentheses, it doesn't mean that it's going to be incorrect. But the probability that it is incorrect increases a lot. So you don't want the probability to be increased out of nothing. So you better use parentheses and you're going to be in your safe place. So this one is the right one. So this one is the right one, okay? So, and we say in Spanish, ojo con eso. Be careful on that. Now, I'm going to erase this one because it's the one incorrect. And I'm just going to put this one instead. Let's work with the other scale of temperature that we have, that is from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So let's imagine that for any reason, I tell you, no, guys, I'm going to give you 100 Celsius. Or imagine that I tell you that the boiling point of water is 100 Celsius degrees. And I want you to convert that into Fahrenheit because I live in the United States and I don't use Celsius. Just remember this. Fahrenheit is a very common temperature unit in the United States. In the rest of the world, we use Celsius. But you should know how to convert between them. Trust me, this is one of the things that I'm very grateful for because I like to try recipes. And some recipes that I find says 350 Fahrenheit, another, uh, I'm not sorry, 350 Celsius, others, 180 Fahrenheit. So I need to know on my oven, my oven scale, and other things I need to know how to convert it because it's going to be useful in that way. Right. So, and the process is very simple, just apply what you have in the formula there. So it's going to be Fahrenheit, it's going to be a constant amount of times 100 Celsius plus 70. How much do you get by that? How much is that? 212. 212. 212. And you don't forget to write the units. These are Fahrenheit. Like that. 212 Fahrenheit. And now the most complicated of all the formulas is converting from Kelvin. Kelvin is equal to Celsius plus 273. So if I say, let's convert 100 Celsius to Kelvin. First, what you have to notice is that I don't have the tiny circle over there that is uh, that you read it as degree. No. The Kelvin temperature is not written as Kelvin degrees like Celsius degrees or Fahrenheit degrees. No, Kelvins are just Kelvins. 100 Kelvins, 273 Kelvins, 500 Kelvins, not Kelvin degrees. Why? Because Kelvin is known as the absolute temperature scale. The absolute scale. Temperature, okay? I'm going to write it off. So, very simple. Kelvin are those 100 Celsius, just apply the formula. Celsius plus 273, so this is going to be 100 plus 273. In total, you're going to have 
373 Kelvin. Very simple. I told you, you're going to like this because it's very simple. Okay, now, let's try another Kelvin. Okay, very simple problem. It says, what are the equivalent Celsius and Kelvin temperatures of 50 degrees Fahrenheit? So we always, as I told you all the time, we always begin with the given. The given in this problem is the temperature of 50 uh, Fahrenheit. Fifty Fahrenheit. Simple as that. So the problem tells you that from Fahrenheit you're gonna need to convert to Celsius and Kelvin. So convert it to Celsius degrees and Kelvin. That's all you need. So right now I'm going to work with the first part that is from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Why do I begin with that and not from Fahrenheit to Kelvin? Question. Why can I not start with this? Take a look at the formulas. Do I have a conversion a formula for Fahrenheit to Kelvin? Take a look. The first one is from Fahrenheit to Celsius, then from Celsius to Fahrenheit then Celsius to Kelvin. So can I do the direct conversion factor? I cannot do it. So my plan for this exercise is converting from Fahrenheit to Celsius and then from Celsius to Kelvin. That is the plan for this exercise. So let's see. <clears throat> Wait, guys. Okay. So let's see. Fahrenheit to Celsius. That is going to be the first conversion. So, what is the equation that I need to use from Fahrenheit to Celsius? So, Celsius degrees is equal to what? Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1.8. And you don't forget that here I use parentheses because in the calculator it's going to be very useful. So this is going to be 50 minus 32 divided by 1.8, which gives me 18 divided by 1.8. So in total, this is going to be 10. 10 degrees Celsius. So this will be my answer. Now, in the other part, I have, um, I need to convert to Kelvin, okay? So I'm going to convert from Celsius, from the Celsius, from already the convert to Celsius to Kelvin. So I'm going to say Kelvin is equal to Celsius plus 273. This is equal to very, very simple. 10 plus 273 which makes 283 Kelvin. Simple as that. As you can see, the application of each formula is 
it doesn't have much complexity than the way you see. Only the first one. That's why I highly recommend to use parentheses. Now, you can continue with your life without using a parentheses, but it's with high probability to get it wrong because of this. Okay, let's go into this topic. This topic, I, I like it a lot. It's called colorimetry. Some other people prefer to call it specific heat capacity. I like to call it calorimetry. It sounds amazing in my opinion. Okay, what is it and why is that so important? Well, I'm going to read the definition, okay? The definition of it in the textbook. It says, the specific heat capacity of a substance is defined as the energy required to change the temperature of one kilogram of that substance by one degree Celsius. This quantity is also sometimes known as just a specific heat. Every substance has a unique specific heat capacity. This value tells you how much the temperature of a given mass of that substance will increase or decrease based on how much energy is added or removed as heat. I want you to raise your hand if you understood what I just said. And I will stop sharing because I want to see your, your hands raised. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ, nobody understood. What a no problem, I couldn't understand it either when I was your age, okay? Not a big deal. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a very common example. How many of you drink coffee? I think at least half of you drink coffee. No, you don't drink coffee. Okay, I'm such a terrible influence. Okay. Well, for those who drink coffee or tea, let's let's call it tea. Okay, a hot beverage. So very very simple example I'm gonna make. Very common situation, you are making your own coffee. Okay, you have your own coffee right here. And imagine, well, do not imagine, we are in the middle of summer. So the weather here is, you know, how is it? Okay, it's very hot. Okay, so here you have your coffee. Let's say your coffee is at a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius, of course, like in the rest of the world. Only in the United States, they use Fahrenheit. So your coffee, which is at 80 degrees Celsius, is just too hot for this hot day and this time. I don't want my coffee to be hot, so I'm gonna be um, Okay, that's not sugar. That's ice. Okay, ice, please. 
so my coffee, which is perfectly done, is just too hot for me. I'm going to add ice in it. Now, remember I told you the temperature at which water freezes? Do you remember at what temperature water freezes? Okay, water zero degrees. Exactly. Water freezes at a temperature of zero degrees Celsius. Okay, so you have your two ice cubes at zero degrees Celsius and you have your coffee at 80. So you're going to mix them together and in the end, you're going to have a mixture. Okay, you're going to have a mixture. Like that. Yeah. A mixture. Now you have your coffee. Plus. Plus ice. Now, do you see the ice in that in that mug over there? Do you see the ice? What happened to the ice? There's they will melt. Okay, ice melted. Why? Because the temperature was very hot for the ice to be melted. Okay, so what you have is not hot coffee anymore. Here you have your ice coffee. The same coffee, but with ice. Okay. So now the temperature of the whole system is 10 Celsius. 10 Celsius. It's cool. Okay. So what happened here is that we have a situation where the coffee passed from being hot and for being cold, okay? That is a situation that you might be familiar with. Now, calorimetry, what is it? And why am I taking this example? Calorimetry is, it refers to substances, okay? It refers to substances, and by definition, by definition, it says, that is the amount of energy required, the amount of energy required in five one to increase the temperature of this block of water, of one gallon of water, if I to change if I want to change the temperature by one degree Celsius. It could be by adding one degree Celsius or by subtracting one degree Celsius. Okay? So this is going to cause um, gaining situation, gaining of gaining temperature here. Okay. If you're adding temperature, you're gaining temperature. If you are subtracting temperature, you are losing temperature. Call it, you can call it losing or I call it releasing temperature. Those are the two possible uh, situations for that kilogram of water over there. So I can heat up one degrees and all the energy that it, that implies, it is called the uh, specific heat, okay? Example, to increase this amount of Celsius, to increase one, one degrees, I'm gonna use energy. Okay, and this amount of energy that I'm going to be using is called specific heat. I know why I hate this app. Specific heat. Okay, my neighbor being my neighbor. Sorry, sorry about it. Totally embarrassed. It seems like I'm coming in the box right now. Perro perrito. So, going back to the example, if I gain temperature, I am using energy to make it gain that temperature. If I'm losing temperature, I'm also releasing energy 
to release that temperature. So that energy required is called a specific heat. And every substance has a very different specific heat. Now, going back to the example of the coffee and the ice cream, we have a situation where two substances are involved. We have the coffee and we have the ice cream. Initially, initially, in final condition, okay? Initially, the coffee was at 80 degrees and the final condition was 10 degrees, okay? So imagine, this is your initial condition over there, and this is your final condition over there too, okay? So initially the coffee was 80, and in the end it was 10. The ice cube initially was at zero degrees, and at what temperature was the ice cube later? Do you see the ice cube? Where is the ice cube? Raquel, you said it. It is melted, okay? Which means the ice cube is over there, melted. You don't see it anymore, but it's still there. Okay, it's part of the iced coffee. You see, the coffee doesn't look very strong, or very, uh, let's say, concentrated. It looks lighter, it, it has a lighter color because ice melted. So in calorimetry, what we have is always two substances, one gaining temperature and the other substances releasing releasing temperature. So the coffee, what did the coffee do? Did it release or absorb temperature? Gain or lose temperature? What's happening with the temperature here? Release. It released, okay? How many uh, how many degrees? 70 degrees. The difference, okay? The difference. Now what happened with the ice cube? It was initially at zero degrees, but then after it cooled down, after it melted, what is the temp I mean, what is the temperature? It doesn't exist anymore. It is combined. And as a new whole, okay? the iced coffee is a brand new substance that shares the final temperature for both substances. So the coffee and the ice cube in the end are going to have the same temperature. So what happened with the ice cube? Did it gain or it release temperature? Again. Yeah. How many? And Celsius. Gain 10 Celsius. So this relationship where you have two substances when, that when they are in contact or in a mixture, one is always going to release and the other is going to gain temperature is what we know as calorimetry. And it's defined by the following equation. Very simple to understand the equation. Let me show you. Q gain is going to be equal to Q release. In Spanish, uh, my teacher taught, uh, taught me this topic as valor ganado igual a calor perdido, just like that. Okay? So I'm going to write it to you that definition over there. Q gain is equal to. So you, and for this kind of exercises, you will always be determining which one, which substance is the one gaining heat and the other releasing heat by taking a look of the temperatures. So again, in the example in the, uh, of the coffee and the ice cube, which one, what substance gained Temperature. Who gained temperature? The ice cube or the coffee? 
The ice, the ice cube. cube. The ice cube. Okay, so you can write it here. And who get uh, who release temperature? Coffee. So for this exercise, it is going uh, to be like this. You're gonna have two substances. You're gonna be relating what is the way that they are interacting to each other. And after this, you will be applying the formula that we had in the beginning. Okay? You will be isolating two because. This is the definition for this. Okay, I'm gonna put it here because my okay, you're gonna be isolating Q, and from that definition of Q, it's gonna be the formula. It's gonna be creating the new formula. Sorry, my laptop stopped and my iPad stopped working. I cannot write it yet. And my computer. On touch, so I cannot do this. And it happens to me only with the white one. I don't know why. That's why I don't like to use it. Okay, so take a look. You're gonna be isolating for Q. Okay, so all this term that is below, that is doing a division, is gonna be sent to the other side by doing a multiplication. That's what we're gonna be doing. Take a look. All this term that is dividing below is going to pass to the other side to the equation by making a division. So you're going to have the formula as specific heat capacity of the ice cube in this case times the mass of the ice cube 